Welcome to Slain Excel Dragons video number 31. Hey, these are the videos that accompany the book. We're still in chapter 5. Our topic is simple. When and how to use the round function. Just like back in the number formatting section when we saw percentage number format, one of the most common errors in Excel is when people don't use round and they're supposed to. Let's go over to our workbook. Um, the workbook is Excel it's fun start. You can either click on the link below the video and download it or go to the DVD. Now we're going to start on the sheet round and we're going to start with just the rules for rounding. Here's a calculation. We calculate and we get this. Well, if this is a ta tax calculation, there aren't any partial pennies, so we need to round. Here's rule number one. You pick the position you want to round to, and this is important even if you already know how to do this fluently because in Excel it's very important that you pick the right position and tell the function where you're going to round to. So here's the decimal, one, two. Now this is the hundredth position, or for us, it's the penny position. So we start there. We look to the right. If this is five or greater, we hack off all of these and add one to there so that four becomes five. If it's four or less, we hack these off and that stays four. So here it is. That becomes that. Those are the rules for rounding. Let's go over and see how we get in trouble. Control home. Here's how we get in trouble. People have tax calculations all the time, right? So they just multiply this times the tax rate. They apply the number formatting and they add. They get 11.99. Now they go and report this on their, you know, tax return or the business for for payroll or whatever, uh, and that number is not right. In addition, this type of calculation is done on invoices where you have some uh, subtotal and you have to multiply times the tax rate. The problem is the way we did this is we did it incorrect. We have calculated the wrong number. So A, our federal tax returns might be wrong. The employees might be, might be mad if they find out we calculated it wrong. If it's an invoice, the customer would be mad. And here's why. Let's just go ahead and say you were suspecting something was wrong. I'm going to look on the surface of the spreadsheet and down here I'm going to type what I see. One dollar eighty-five cents, three seventy-four, two eighty-eight, three fifty-three, and then I'm going to add alt equals. Clearly, we type these in. The answer is twelve. The problem is what? Can you guess? It is two things. One is number formatting. If I highlight these and increase the decimals, there it is. There's a bunch of partial pennies over here. And when you are multiplying or dividing decimals and you're required to round, which we are here, this is an amount that's going to be paid in pennies. We, that means by default we're required to round. So what do we do? We multiplied. It didn't round. It looked like it was rounded. Why? Control Z Z. Number formatting. Ah, so we have to find a way to officially round. And the answer is the round function. Now, let me just delete this for a second. If you were just calculating these numbers and you never had some subsequent formula that was going to be looking at the, the formula results, it wouldn't matter because you could see $1.85. Right? So if that was your end goal, never to use these in some subsequent uh, calculation, no problem. But the fact that we're adding, guess what? Formulas do not look at formatting. Right? We've already talked about this numerous times. So of course, this function is looking at all the partial pennies and adding them. All right, and I have the rules for when you are required to round over here. We'll look at those in just a moment. Let's just see how to round. Anytime you do a calculation, F2, this is a simple calculation, but sometimes your calculations get big and long. You just take the thing, however big and long it is, and you slap it inside the round function. So I'm going to put round. That number just means whatever your calculation is. I'm going to come to the end, and this numbers of digits, comma, that's the position you want to round to. And you've got to remember a new convention in Excel. You, it always starts at the decimal. Remember, decimal here. And one, two. Notice I'm moving to the right. If I want to round to the tenths, I put in a one because I'm moving from the right one position. If I want to 
go to, which is to the penny, I have to put a two here. And that's it. That's the trick. I just memorized this. I, I just remembered the penny is always two. What if you wanted to round for income taxes to the integer? Well, if this is one and this is two, what's this? Two, one, zero. All right, so I'm going to close parentheses, control enter, and now you can see we have officially rounded. Drag this down. I have the um, decimal showing just to prove to ourselves that those have been hacked off. So no longer do we have to do rounding by hand. We can have the round function do it for us, but you got to remember to put it in. And, and it, it's it is an unhappy fact that most people, or no, I don't know how many, but a lot of spreadsheets I've seen over the years for taxes and invoices and other things, they're required to round and they don't, and their calculations are not correct. All right, and what, what's the problem here? So what if it's off by a penny? If your customer realizes even if it's a penny off and they don't trust your invoice anymore, that's not good. Same with the employees. All right, now let's go look at our rules. Here are the situations when you have to use round. You're required to round like with money involving invoices, taxes, payroll. There are no partial pennies. Number two, the formula calculations involves multiplying and dividing numbers that contain decimals. Get this though, numbers that are being added or subtracted should already be rounded properly. For example, over here, this was the calculation multiplying that got us in trouble, not this. These should already be rounded before you get to adding and subtracting. And finally, the formula calculation result will be used in subsequent formulas like sum when adding a column of tax calculations. All right, now one last example. I do want to show you uh, how to round to the dollar. In fact, the, the penny and the dollar are the ones that are basically used all the time in business. Lots of other fields use uh, different uh, positions to round to, but let's just do this round. And of course, this is to the penny, so it's two. And I always remember it, count to the right of the decimal, one, two. There we see. This one's going to the uh, dollar for income taxes. So of course, this is going to turn out to be $13, comma, and what is it? Zero. I remember the two for the penny, and then I go two, one, and a zero. Finally, sometimes you round to the thousands, which means, oh, we have to figure out a convention going to the left of the decimal. Well, watch this. If that's zero, minus one, minus two, minus three. And sometimes you have financial statements or some things like that where you're rounding to some position to the left. All right, so watch this, minus three. And that's all you need to know about round. The um, different, and I have these uh, numbers over here for the second argument. You have to remember that these rules right here, and then you have to remember to actually put the round function in. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.